Hey, welcome back to Lesson 3.3. We're doing Part B this time, and uh, we're still talking about the sine and the cosine function values. What? Here's what we're going to do now. If you go back to the last lesson, we taught you the cosine of theta is x over r, and we really talked about the horizontal displacement over the distance from the point to the origin, right? And then for for the sine of theta, it was the vertical displacement. Remember, I drew a little I drew a little triangle right here, and then we called this value x, and this value was y, and then we found the sine and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to erase that for right now, but that's what we did, and we came up with the two formulas, uh, cosine of theta equals x over r, and the sine of theta equals y over r. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve each one for x and y. The way to do that, I'm going to multiply this side to each side by r. We'll do these will cancel out, and we get x right here. X is equal to r times the cosine of theta. Well, that's pretty easy for a formula, right? And then. Doing the same thing with the sine formula, multiply both sides by r, these will cancel. y will equal r times the sine of theta. So if we have a circle, if we multiply the radius times the sine of the angle in radians, then we will get the x and y, well, the, the sine will be the y, and then the cosine will be the x. That's easy peasy. We can get the point of intersection between the terminal ray and the circle. Now, things that we need to know. Uh, we're going to focus on angles that are multiples of pi over 6 and pi over 4. Remember, that's 30 and 45. So we're not going to use a calculator because we have to know those. I told you last time you got to memorize them. So we're just going to now use a calculator, and we're going to have these angles and their coordinate points memorized. Seems easy enough, right? So let's get started on the first one. Here's our two equations that we figured out. R times the cosine. Oh, that is embarrassing. R times the cosine of theta. R times the sine of theta. There we go. Here's what we have. Each problem, we have an angle in standard position, the xy plane, and a circle centered at the origin, and the radius is given. Okay, so these aren't unit circles necessarily. What are the coordinates of the point of intersection of the terminal ray and the angle of the circle? So the first thing I like to do is draw a little sketch. They tell us for number one that theta equals 5 pi over 6. So we need a good idea of how much that is, right? Remember, pi over 6 is like our first angle here in the unit circle. And we did 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6 was... Uh, pi over 2, right? And then 4 pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So we're going to have an angle that's out here in quadrant 2. All right, that's important to know because that means that our x value should be negative and our y value will be positive. We know that the radius is 6. All right, so as we know that the formula here, if we want to know what the coordinates of x and y are, then that would be the same as r times the cosine of theta, comma, r times the sine of theta. Well, what is the cosine of 5 pi over 6? All right, so we're going to use the reference triangle right here. Here's what theta is. The reference angle we're going to use is right here. It is, what do we got, pi over 6? The reference angle is pi over 6, so that means that what do we have here? A 1, we have a 2, and a radical 3, and this is uh, negative. But we really want to put these into our memory. That's our goal here. We want to put them in our memory. So to figure out these coordinate points, it's going to be 6 is the radius times the cosine. The cosine here is going to be negative radical 3 over 2, and then comma 6 times the sine. Now the sine here is going to be positive 1 half, and so we get a coordinate point that is equal to these will cancel, and it'll leave me a 3 right here. We can say negative, it's 3 times negative radical 3, that's negative 3 radical 3, comma, the two canceled, and then six times a half, which is three. And there's our first question. It's really, it's not too difficult. They're all kind of similar. So we can work through them all together. And, uh, you know, I think we can we can make it work. These are pretty easy. Let's do the next one. Number two, uh, I'm going to draw it. It is pi over three. Now we know pi over three is up here more, right? This is in quadrant one. And if I draw it, then pi over three, uh, what do we got? A one here and a radical three here and a two and everything's going to be positive and we have a radius of seven so let's do the same thing we want the coordinate point of the circle that will intersect that point right there we're talking about that oh very good that point of intersection right here what are the coordinates of that so we know that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta and then y is equal to r times the sine of theta so it goes cosine sine in this case, it's going to be 7 times the cosine of pi over 3. We know that's a half. We should know that's a half. And then it'll be 7 times we have the sine of pi over 3. And that would be radical 3 over 2. And they're both positive because we're in the first quadrant. 
So what do we get here? I'm just going to leave it as fractions. 7 halves, comma, 7 radical 3 over 2. And that's it. That is the coordinates of the point of intersection right there. Easy enough. So now we have uh, three examples down here. In an xy plane, the terminal ray of angle theta in standard position intersects the circle at the given point. What are the values of theta and r? So it's the same question going backwards. So how do we do that if we're going to go backwards with it? Well, what I would do is I would draw, let's draw this first of all. And we know that this is in what? This is positive and this is negative. So this must be down here somewhere, right? And I know that because we have a positive x and we have a negative y. So I know that the x coordinate right here is going to be r times the cosine of theta. All right, well, we know that r times the cosine of theta is radical 2 over 2. And also, y is r times the sine of theta. All right, these are things we know, right? I already wrote that down before. But how can we figure this out? We need to know this is the cosine of theta times r, and this is the sine of theta times r. So as we said earlier, like these have to become familiar with you, and you have to start memorizing them. I have recognized that radical 2 over 2, that is the cosine of an angle that has a reference angle of pi over 4. Did you recognize that? If it's pi over 4, then we'd have 1 over radical 2, which then rationalizes into radical 2 over 2. That comes from the last lesson. Now, the other thing we need to be aware of is this is down in quadrant 4. So what angle, when we start in standard position, will come over here and leave a reference angle of pi over 4? So we have 1 pi over 4, 2, 3, 4 pi over 4, 5, 6, 7. This angle right here of theta, theta is going to equal 7 pi over 4. And again, the way that I got that is I recognize that this is the cosine of the reference angle for pi over 4. Can we go back can we go back to that that unit that unit circle that we should be trying to memorize? Here are the notes that we had in the last lesson and if you remember we started out by looking at sorry about that. We started out by looking at angles of pi over 4 and if you notice down here, we have an angle of 7 pi over 4 and that occurs at radical 2 over 2 comma negative radical 2 over 2. All right, let me take you back here. Look what we have, radical 2 over 2 and negative radical 2 over 2. We are looking for coordinate points that have been multiplied by some radius, okay? An angle that would give us a cosine and a sine that when you multiply the cosine and sine by radius, you get that coordinate point. But look, that's exactly, that's exactly what we get for the cosine and the sine for 7 pi over 4. So that must mean that the radius here must be 1 because both of these values were multiplied by 1. This is the cosine of 7 pi over 4 and this is the the sine of 7 pi over 4. So because they're exact, the radius must be 1. Let's make that look like an R and that's our answer to number 3. Let's try number 4. Now when I see number 4 I notice some things. I notice that a radical 3 over 2 is in here but it's been multiplied by 3. And this is also 1 half multiplied by 3. Okay, I also notice that we have two negatives. So I'm going to sketch this out a little bit. We have negative and negative, which means it's down here, right? So we have an angle that's down in the third quadrant. And I'm going to rewrite this, this uh, coordinate point here as 3 times negative radical 3 over 2, comma, make that look like a 2. And then it's 3 times negative 1 half. So I just need to know which angle has a cosine of negative 3 over 2. And when I figure that out, I'm going to get a, it has a reference angle of pi over 6, right? So pi over 6 has a cosine of radical 3 over 2. So that means this angle right here is pi over 6. So theta, the reference angle, is going to be pi over 6 plus all this stuff. So... We have 1 pi over 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6. That's what theta is going to be here. 7 pi over 6. And then, of course, each one of these was multiplied by a radius of 3. So we'd say the radius equals 3 here. All right, does this make sense? Because we have a cosine that's negative. We have a sine that's negative. So we're in the third quadrant. We notice that both of these, if we pull the 3 out, then we get a very familiar radical 3 over 2 and 1 half. We know that, uh, you know, which angle has a sine of 1 half? It's pi over 6, right? That's, that's the one I memorized. So I know this is a pi over 6 reference angle. We're in the third quadrant. 
So it must be a full pi plus a pi over six is seven pi over six. Hope I'm not hope I'm not going too far with it. Let's go number five right now. We'll do the last one and then we'll be out of here. Okay, looking at number five, I'm gonna keep some things in mind. First off, there's only three angles we're dealing with here that we need to memorize from the unit circle. We have pi over six, we have pi over three, right? That's like the thirty and the sixty. And then the forty five would be the pi over four. Okay, and these generate values for cosine and, so, and sine that are radical 3 over 2 or 1 over 2. I mean, that comes from the 30 and the 60, and from the pi over 4 or the 45, that's radical 2 over 2. Okay, these are the values we're looking for when we look into our coordinate point here. And I notice that our y value has a radical 3, so it must be a radical 3 over 2. But this says 2 radical 3, so how can I get it there? I'm just going to divide each by 4. Like if I were to divide each by 4, I would have a negative 1 half and I would have a radical 3 over 2. So this point must be 4 times and then the first one we'll have is negative 1 half comma and it must be 4 times radical 3 over 2. And let's see if that makes sense. If I were to multiply this out, I get 2 times negative 1 which is negative 2. And if I were to multiply this out, I get 2 radical 3. Now I'm going to do a little sketch so I can find out where we're at. Okay, we must be in what quadrant? Looking at the coordinate point, it's negative x value and a positive uh, y value. So we're over here somewhere. And this is our angle for theta. Our reference angle here, well, the cosine is going to be negative 1 half. Well, I know that that's pi over 3. I have memorized that from my unit circle. So this is pi over 3. All right, so the way I think about it is this is just pi, right? This is 3 pi over 3. This is one full pi, and I take a third away. So this angle out here must be 2 pi over 3. All right, and let's see if that gives us everything we need. If I find, what do we got? The cosine of pi over 3, I get negative 1 half. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3, correction, I said pi over 3, but 2 pi over 3 equals negative one half and the sine of two pi over three is going to give us a positive radical three over two and that's basically it so what do we get here we find the radius must be four and theta must be two pi over three and we're all done and that's basically how this works that was an easy quick lesson we only got a couple of practice problems and we have a new mastery check remember no calculator on this one this is mr kelly remember it's nice to be important but it's more important to be nice see you.